If you're a fan of anime, tabletop gaming, or both, don't miss an episode of Heathen Dogs, Heathen Dogma. Each week, Heathen Dog alternates between anime reviews and tabletop gaming fundamentals. Watch live and chat with Heathen Dog every Saturday at 8 p.m. Central Time to share your thoughts and recommendations with him. Now, without further ado, I ask all of you to close your eyes and breathe deep. Feel within the music of the universe as it calls to you with its siren wailing from across the stars. The beating of the pulsars send their light through you, streaming, my friends, into your mind, where the energies of the cosmic whales come in and are decoded by ancient receptors built into your Abdullah Ablangata, that very thing which told the fish to grow feet and rise from the world. My friend, it tells you now to rise, rise beyond your limited selves, and go, my friend, go into that dark horizon where none may find except you, the seeker, the dreamer, the doer, for there, my friends, you will come upon the cosmic doorway. Though the light streams by, fearfully you tiptoe, daring, daring to the threshold, grasping the silver doorknob, trembling with fear. You open it, and there, streaming inside your mind, is he the dog's RPG fundamentals, Numenera Discovery. Thank you very much, Garth. Subscribe! Hello, everyone. Ah! <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Thank you all for coming by. I appreciate it. And, uh... Uh, today is the part two and final part of my character generation portion of the overview of Numenera Discovery. Yes. Now, today is not a whole lot, but unlike unlike the others, I'm going to have my opinion of the game on the end. Because I have one. There you go. But first, let's look at the particulars of this book, just in case you missed it. Uh, this came out on October 17, 2018. And uh, Monty Cook Games is the publisher. And you can get it if you want it. On Amazon for forty-seven bucks, about. Uh, if you just want the PDF, twenty bucks from Drive Through RPG, or you can get it on eBay for around twenty-five dollars, give or take, depending on, of course, the condition shipping. of your book. And shipping is is shipping free. Is shipping not free? That's you know you got you got to shop around eBay. Everyone knows that. That's you got to look, look at the fine print. So let's look at the road so far. This is what we did on the part one of character generation. We chose a glaive as my character archetype. And the abilities I get, I get a plus one melee damage. I am I decide to be trained in jumping. I'm going I'm to go over skills today, so I'm going to explain that. And I have the ability of misdirect. It's a special glaive ability you get to pick at tier one, which is like level one. And what it allows me to do, it allows me to uh, take someone's melee attack on me and misdirect it onto one of one of his buddies that's near him. So he actually hits his friend rather than me, which I think would be really funny. So I took it. That would be highly entertaining. Yes. Yeah. And uh, everyone, everyone gets uh, every glaive gets the same stats, but you get six points or so to divvy up however you want. And just to let you know, uh, anywhere between nine and 12 is considered average. All right. So I am, Average and above average in, in everything. So that's good. Now, as my descriptor, if you want full explanation of this, go ahead and read, go ahead and watch part one. But uh, I chose intelligent because I, I wasn't going to be a grunt. You know, glaives are are your frontline warriors. You know, they're, they're, the, they're the guys who are in the trenches. They're the guys who, you know, get the blood and gore on them. But I didn't want to be just like, like a jarhead, you know, kill them all, let God sort them out type guy. No, I want I want to be the thinking man's warrior. So I chose intelligence, my descriptor. And with that, I got an extra knowledge skill of my choice. And I get the ability of eidetic memory, which it again, part one, I explain what that does. Now, also, I get master's weaponry foci uh, that that's what I chose as as my as my focus, master's weaponry. Uh, I gain a high quality weapon of my choice and I get a plus one damage with my chosen weapon. And I am automatically trained with a skill in crafting and repairing my chosen weapon. That's what I got in part one. Now, let's look at part two. Our next steps are going to be skills. Okay. Skills are acquired by focus and tier. So you, you acquire uh, skills uh, by choosing a focus, which I did. And you acquire skills by going up in tier or like going up in level. Uh, what skills do is they ease related tasks. Meaning if I have a skill in lock picking, I get a minus one difficulty to picking locks. 
that's great. And if I get the skill twice, because as you go up in tier, it says you may choose one of the following, or you may you may choose one that you already have or that you do not already have. If it says you may choose one of the following and it's a list you have it before, you can choose the same skill twice. Then you're specialized in that skill and you get a minus two to your difficulty rate. And I really should have put the, the difficulty table up here because uh, there's a difficulty rating and that rating equals a number on a D20 you have to roll equal or above to actually succeed in the task. And what do you roll and e on? Like a D20, 2D6? It's, it's, it's always a D20. It's always a, a, a D D20 for success and failures. And damage is set. And we're going to get that when we get new equipment. All right. Now, uh, yeah, e equipment, uh, there is currency, used to buy equipment, obviously, uh, armored weapons, and special equipment, miscellaneous stuff, uh, uh, healing stuff, uh, quality of life stuff, stuff like that. I'm, don't worry, I'm going to go over all that as well. Now, first, we're going to start with skills. Now, with this game, skills are whatever you want them to be. This is a list, and it's not a list of skills. It's a list of possible skills. There are no skills in the game. That sounded weird, but it's true. You and the game master decide on what you are, what your character is trained in, and you make that skill together. So if you you can literally be, I want to be trained in underwater basket weaving. Okay, you have the underwater basket weaving skill. Every time you weave a basket underwater, you're a minus one to your difficulty. That'll be useful for those underwater baskets I need. Exactly, right? But, again, like I said, there's no real skill list. All this here that I put here are the initial suggestions. But it's you and the Game Master's job to come up with, with your own skills and and uh, their range and scope. So, like, if you say running. Well, running may involve just running fast. Or it may involve running fast and endurance increased it you're trained in running so you have the proper form so you can run for longer not just faster also for longer you you and the gm have to negotiate this so once you get a skill like i said you're trained in it you're minus one difficulty to everything that you and the game master decide falls under the scope and if you somehow get it again then it's a minus two difficulty for everything that falls under the scope so if your character was a bounty hunter slash model, you could get skills in like posing. And... Yes. All right. Yeah, and uh, tracking. You know, bounty hunter and model. Yeah. Well, yeah. You know, yeah, their skills obviously. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. All right. It's very sure. flexible. It Infinitely is. It's flexible. very flexible. It is very much so. And you now... never know what a pose off will happen with a wanted man. <laughs> yeah, you never know. You, you could have a. You, you could even have a uh, Star Lord dance off situation. You know. That could happen. That skill came in handy. That's right. right. Didn't think it would. Didn't think it would. But it did. Yep. Cause confusion. All right. So now we're going to go to equipment. The first type of equipment we're going to go is armor. Now, the Ooh, important thing you know, Thank you. What happened? Serial Noob subscribed. Hey, Serial Noob. Thank you. Uh, what you need Two to know about streak. armor. Wow. Good deal. Is that the same type armor doesn't stack. So we'll look at this chart. Let's say you have a leather jerkin and hides and furs you can't stack them on top of each other hides and furs where where, where the jerkin is and have and have uh, two points of armor because light armor gives one point you can't that's because hides and furs basically are the same thing as stacking on that you're not doing yourself any yeah more favors. yeah you're not doing yourself any favors except maybe screwing your encumbrance a bit right now armor from different sources do stack now for example let, let's say you have a numenera that get, that grants you a force field a skin tight force field around your body that plus uh plus the skin of a beast for medium armor would give you a total armor rating of plus three rather than just plus two for the highest level because they're they're from different kinds of armor interesting yes so as long as you and the gm can can negotiate you know, that, no, I'm not wearing this armor on top of other armor. This is a completely different kind of armor than it will stack. Which is different than almost every other system out there, which basically says, well, if you're wearing a higher kind of armor, it incorporates lower kinds in it. That's why it's yeah. better. Right. 
Like I mean, plate it, mail it, is better it, than chain mail, but you wear chain under plate. Yeah, you wear chain under plate, so it's it's a combination of both. That's why it's inherently better. Right. Yeah, I get it. And it could be that, you know, a, a leather jerkin and hides and furs. When you wear hides and furs, you're also wearing a leather, yeah, it's you know, leather, a anyway. leather, leather on the bottom of that to sew it all on together. So you're literally wearing both. So, yeah, I mean, they didn't explain it that way in this game, but you could and it would be completely feasible. Right. But this actually does beyond saying instead of saying you actually can wear, say, micro mesh underneath your chain mail and it gets better. So that's good. You can literally wear a chain under your plate armor in this, and you get the benefits of both. Well, no, no, be, yes. because you're, you're you're wearing them in the same, and the, they're they're the same kind of armor. So, uh, the but, thing but is, chain is under medium, and his plate is under heavy. Yeah, but it's it's worn in the same. You're wearing it on your chest and body. Now, a force field is different. It's on a belt but buckle you, or you a, just said you a, could that if they're no, different, no, different categories, they add. No, 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 not different categories, different. Uh, different sources. Now, uh, what, what I mean, what I mean by sources, I'm not explaining this word. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm confusing you on this. But uh, for uh, f- for example, armor uh, armor cloth and beast skin. They are two different categories of armor. One is special light. One is medium. But they're both worn in the same on the same place on your body. It's just you're stacking them on each other. A force field is not worn armor. It's a. It's not just a different so category. You couldn't it's a stack a leather jerkin and, and micro mesh then. No, you could okay. not do that. No. All right. Because they're both they're both worn armor and worn in the same place. Now. All right. That's fine. If if you had B skin and say some kind of uh, of substantial uh, arm armor and you went to go like this to block, the GM might give you a stacking armor bonus. In that situation. All right, makes sense. Okay. Again, th- there's there's a lot of give and take with the player and GM in this game when it comes to things like this. All right. Now, when you're wearing armor, uh, you have obviously encumbrance. You know, the, and encumbrance is your speed effort is affected. So I, I, every time you want to push your speed a little bit, you want to you want to get a little extra oomph. It costs one additional from your from your speed pool, which again I covered in part one. Now, currency. Shins. You see the price of stuff right here. It says shins. Yes. Shins are weird. All right. I don't. It, it's weird. Shins are they're coins uh, minted in the ninth world, which is the current world, and we are at the beginning of the current world. Okay, so they're minted now, and they are steel, steel, maybe silver, maybe uh, elaborately done. Uh, lithographs, who knows? Shins, shins can be anything because they are regional. Some regions don't take other regions shin. So you could walk, you know, 50 miles or r- ride, ride your, ride your tauntaun 50 miles, come to another village and suddenly your money is garbage. That can happen. And there are other, there are other places that accept all shins. So it doesn't matter. Yay. They'll even exchange shins. And what the heck happened? What, 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 what? Are, are you still there? Yeah, I'm still here. We're going. Okay, my uh, my monitor just went blank. That's because your monitor does not like you. My monitor does not like me. Okay, I can't see anything anymore. So uh, and I'll just finish explaining shins before I have to do this whole reboot nonsense. But uh, Did you accept uh, technology from the lowest bidder? I did. I did accept technology from the lowest bidder. It was my bad. Now, uh, again... You can make your own shins. Like you, you, you go into uh, into eighth world, or se- or, or, or seventh world uh, ruins and find like really cool high tech buttons, and some people might consider that a shin and take it as a shin. Now the problem with with uh, with your starting character is most characters start with five shins. Go ahead and look on the chart. What what can you really buy for five shins that is not crap. Mm. Well, if you spend all your money, you can get medium. Yep. Yep. All your money. All your money. No food, no weapons for you. Nope. None of that. None of that for you. That's that's all you get. And uh, but l- luckily with me, with uh, b- because I chose ma- uh, Master of Weapons Foci, I get a high quality weapon of my choosing. Oh, that's convenient. Yeah, right? Yeah. And uh to be fair in your starting equipment you get you get a a small melee weapon 
and a uh, and a small ranged weapon with uh, with twelve uh, pieces of ammo, depending on what which one you choose. You choose a blowgun, you'll get blow darts. You choose a crossbow, you'll get bolts. Whatever for free, but twelve doesn't last a whole long. And uh, a little knife isn't going to help you a whole lot, right? So you're probably going to want to uh, be able to buy something a little better. So having five shins, I think, is a little low. Yeah. A little on the low side. All right, so let me see if I can get this back. Yes, I can. Okay. Hey, there it is. Came back. All right. Congratulations. Good job. You All solved right. the so problem. We will move on to weapons now that I can see it. Uh, weapons just like armor, light, medium, and heavy. All right, and as you can see, the shin price, uh, they they're fairly cheap, much much cheaper than armor, so that's good. Uh, cost and damage goes up as you go up in level. Now, the one thing they'll have in common is all light weapons do two damage, all medium weapons do four damage, and all heavy weapons do six damage. It's just your flavor, what you want. Some of these are even AOE type weapons, like the like the razor ring, can can hit multiple enemies at one time. Uh, some of them, like the blowgun, obviously, one guy at a time. So uh, you know that's going to be it's going to be affected in the price, and it's going to be affected in the utility, whatever flavor you want. Now uh, your weapon class, what defines a weapon as light, medium, or heavy? It's how much how many hands you you need or could use with it. If a weapon can only be used effectively in one hand, like a blowgun or a dagger or or a small club like they have here, like a like a like a regular hammer, can only effectively be used in combat with one hand. That is a light weapon. If a weapon can be used with one or two hands effectively in combat, that's a medium weapon. If a weapon must be used with two hands, to be effective in combat, that's a heavy weapon. That's how they determine what is light, medium, and heavy. Makes sense. So, you know, if you have craft weapons or whatever as a skill, and you want to make your own weapon, like, I, I want to make the glaive from Krull. Okay. Technically, that's a one-handed ranged weapon, so that would be a light weapon. Yes. It cannot be effectively used with two hands. Lightsabers would be light weapons? Lightsabers would be... No, they would be medium weapons. Oh, because they'd be one or two hands. That's true. They can be one or two-handed. Uh, then they'd be medium sabers. That's, that's true. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Now, Darth Maul's double lightsaber is a heavy weapon. It, to be effective in combat, it must be used with two hands. Fair enough. Yes. All right, let's go now to the character sheet. Now, I want you to look at the character sheet. That's I tried... It is. It is. It's very busy. It's very artistic. But when I tried typing in the character and uh, the finished character into this thing, my eyes started to water. Color contrast could be better. Yes. It, it is very hard to look at. I recommend if you're going to print out this character sheet, do it in black and white. Don't do it in color like it is in the book. This is page one. And you go to the next page. That's page two. Page two is your background, your your notes. And uh, and um, your advancement stuff, stuff like that. Just the, the the page two is flavor. Page one is all of your relevant statistics. Now, because I didn't want to write it here, because reading it on this character sheet is blindingly awful, I went ahead and uh, oh, I and I didn't finish my equipment. I got it in the wrong. I got the slides in the wrong order. This is the helpful item equipment. All right, common and rare, and very rare. Common and rare are manufactured in the ninth world, in in the present society. Uh, they're manufactured locally or very close by, and their quality varies by region. Some people specialize in stim packs or whatever. Some people specialize in compasses be because they have really high quality magnesite or whatever in their region. Makes sense. Great. Great. Fine. Now, very rare, there are items that are not made in the ninth world. They're, they're found in scavenging from civilizations long dead, but they're found in such numbers that they can be sold on the common market in many places. Now, this, this effects is by price because it's dangerous going to get it. They may be plentiful. You, may, you, you could find like 144 gross of them, but it's underneath this, this giant beetle thing 
in this in this old cryo chamber from a civilization that's been dead for ten thousand years. What are so memory getting it's a little ants. rough. I need to know what memory ants are. I I'm looking that up. <laughs> well, I, what I want to talk about is spray flesh. This is neat. This is your this is your uh, low level med pack, and uh, it costs one hundred shins. It has it has limited uses, but more than one. But what it is is uh is you it's it's kind of like a uh, as seen for TV, Flex Seal. You spray it on your skin, and it creates a barrier, and it heals six points of, uh, of stat damage. Great. They even have spray metal, which is the same thing, only for metal. Like, oh no, I have a crack in my boat. I've got Flex Seal, and you're good to go. You're floating. Right. Yeah, you know, it's great. I love that. I thought it was pretty awesome. Like, oh man, this is made made for TV stuff. It's awesome. Uh, let's see what else. Did you look up memory ants? I can't find anything. All right, hang on. I, I'll look it up. I need the PDF apparently. Memory ants, uh, page ninety-eight. All right. There it is. Memory ants. This is a small jar of tiny insects that run across a page of text and then return to the jar. When spilled out again and given ink, they replicate the text that they ran over the first time. And then die. That's, that seems a strange life cycle. It is a very strange life cycle. I don't know how you breed memory I'm guessing memory they're not ants. actually ants. They're tiny machines. That's most likely true. That is most likely true. Yes. Then there's the shaper key. It's a wad of putty that can be inserted into a conventional lock. It takes on the form of the key for that lock and then hardens permanently into a functional key specific to that lock. What? So it's a lock picker's dream. What are the advantages over shaper ants versus like a portable printer? Uh, it depends how big the jar or is. Taking a picture of it. Or taking a picture. But the thing is, in the ninth world, they don't have cameras yet. <laughs> Just seems brand kinda, new. Seems kind of like, oh, we have this insanely advanced yeah. technology to I know, copy exactly. a piece of yeah. paper. That, that's, that's the thing about Numenera Discovery. They are medieval level technology, but a lot of people have figured out some of the some of the technology that was left by by highly advanced civilizations that have been that have either dead or gone or ascended to another plane of existence or whatever, and they use it without understanding how to replicate it. And they it could be the it. memory ants actually have a totally different function they are actually designed for, but they will also do yes, this. exactly right. I mean, think of the people of the ninth world. Like uh, like the uh, Star Trek race that uh, that that kidnapped Jordy because Jordy makes them go. Wasn't that the Packlets? There, nah, was it the Packlets? Yeah, so, it sounds right. The Packlets. Yeah, uh, they they can't fix anything. They can't make anything. They can only push buttons and operate things through trial and error, and then they get stuff to work. But if it breaks, they need an engineer like Jordy to make them go again. It's kind of like this. If if you're if, if you uh, if you're uh, laser sword runs out of juice. Your 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 lightsaber. You found a lightsaber. Yay! You're cutting through folk like nothing. And then the battery pack runs out. Oh crap! You just throw it away. There's no way to recharge it. Right. It's it's now a paperweight. So that's that's how it goes. That's just that's just how it is. You got to deal with that. Okay. So now we're done. Afraid now we're done. So technology. They're very talented. That's what I've been yeah. told. Meh. All right, so what have we got? Uh, we've got skills. Now, I only get one extra skill. I've already got jumping be because of my, my tier one glaive. And because of intelligent, I get an extra knowledge skill. I chose tactics. Now, I, I negotiated with my game master, which was me. It's hard negotiation, but I think I did okay. That uh, the skill of tactics in... Uh, on it's 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 a the ground level tactics. It's in the moment tactics. Like uh, I can use this skill successfully against against a, uh, an opponent, and if I succeed, I can gain a tactical advantage in my next attack, and it will bring down the difficulty for me to hit that person. That's what this tactic skill does. And I said okay to that. So good. very nice. Yes. And uh, for my equipment, can I even afford chainmail? I don't think I can afford. No, chain you cannot mail. afford chainmail. I cannot afford chainmail. I want it. I okay. I I uh, 
I, I sold my blowgun. To a and, and my and and my twelve darts for four shins. A chainmail costs six shins. So I have seven now. No, I have a nine now. So I I, I bought I bought chainmail, and I have three shins left. Uh, number one, I get my weapon right. I already get my weapon. I chose a high quality, great axe because if if I'm if I'm getting a bonus to hit someone, I want to hit them definitively. Yes. And I get a plus one damage with my chosen weapon and a plus one damage with melee. So with this great axe, I'm doing eight damage, and I believe high quality gives me another plus one. So that's actually nine damage with that's this axe very good. every hit. Bam! Now remember. Uh, damage takes away from your might pool and average is between nine and 12. So I could kill in one hit an average dude, just split him in half. Hassan chop. He's done. Excellent work. Yeah. If he's not done, he wish he was done because he's hurt real bad. Yes. Real bad. And then with, with my three shin, I can get some miscellaneous items. I don't know. Uh, I can get a, a a bag, and an ink pen. Bag. That's three good. shins. That's three shins right there. I, I I can write write my name on my on my clothes and my bag. With my ink pen. Ooh, that that's uh wow! You're impressing me. There you go. So, that is all. That is all for Numenera Discovery. What did you think of this segment? Before you go into the chat and go into the comments below, I'm going to tell you what I think of Numenera. I would not play this game. I'm not saying it's a bad why, game. Why would, they, why would you not play this game? I'm not saying it's a bad game. It's a bad game for me. The reason being is because I like a game with a rich backstory. This has the potential for rich backstory, but the characters can never know it. You're literally apart from the history of the planet. There is a gap of knowledge, a chasm of knowledge that can never be traversed to get to the backstory of the planet. You can never know. You as your character can never know. Because you're a completely different society. I personally don't like that. And the skill system. I like a robust skill system. This is the opposite of that. This is laziness, in my opinion. You just decided that, no, I don't want to spend time making skills. I'm just going to leave it up to the game master and the player to do my job for me to make the skills for their game. That that's what I read when I read this. I didn't like it. All right. Fair enough. I didn't like it at all. So uh, all of that together, I would not play this game. Having read it, it would, it, it just seems like uh, it would be harder to make my character in the, now, I understand why they, they did the whole, my name is this and I am a glaive that does this because they're trying to force you to make a backstory for your character because the world has no backstory to draw from. So it's all about you. And it's harder to make a character with in an, in a complete vacuum, which is what Numenera discovery is with, without a world backstory. It's a vacuum. So you're saying there's not enough, there to there's, there's no not a framework there to hang a character off of in any exactly substantial thing connected to the world itself exactly there's nothing to connect to the world because the world is brand new there's no there's not enough elements to draw from to actually get a history of your character that makes sense i can see that in my opinion in my opinion now the the of course the the uh, skill thing is just ridiculous because uh all you have to do is have one character i'm sorry one player who is who is a shyster and he could talk himself into skills that are so overpowered it's crazy and then you have another character who has who I'm not sorry another player who is the opposite of that he has trouble you know uh expanding beyond the literal and he'll have skills that are basically worthless in almost any situation now I was kind of thinking the same thing like what maximized skills could I have hmm I have a skill in outdoorsmanship that means that I know climbing, a... running, survival, hunting. Exactly. Hunting, tracking, trapping, uh, fishing, uh, fishing, uh, skinning, building shelters. Outdoorsmanship could be so creating shelter, fire, knowing which plants are poisonous. 
No English plants are poisonous. Uh, drinkable water. Everything. It can. And if you can talk yourself into that, you have a skill that is like 20 skills in one. Unless you talk your and game master into it. it's completely legit for the rules. Completely fine. Whereas you have another character, he he wanted he wanted the same concept, but he couldn't convince a game master that outdoorsmanship did all that. So he got trapping. He got. Uh, he took fishing. He took trapping, fishing, and fire building. Ooh, fire That's building. That's good. That's all he's got. Whereas the outdoorsman over here, Shyster, he can do all that and so much more just because he talked the GM into it. Exactly. So I would not play this game. It's too ill-defined for me to too hang my hat. Too open to abuse in many ways. Too open to abuse. Too open to interpretation. No two games are going to be anywhere close to the same. Ooh, anywhere says close. he can convince us of anything. I there you him. go. See, shyster. I believe him. There you go. But those are my thoughts on Discovery. What are your thoughts on Numenera Discovery? And do you have any other suggestions for tabletop RPG? Now, now bear in mind, when Cyberpunk 2077 comes out, I'll be doing that one, definitely. So if it comes out, it, they, they pushed it a little while, I believe. They, they, they want to coincide it with the video game, I yes. think. Yeah, it's probably. Yeah, yeah. so so they, they were supposed to be in the last quarter of this year, but it actually end up being the first quarter of next year. Yeah. Something like that. So, uh, yeah. All right, if you want more Heathen Dog, like, share, subscribe on the YouTubes and on the Twitters and everywhere you got. So we could join for full streams of anime, comics, and games. Members only chat and giveaways. Monthly Q&A, Legion with members, and account treasure Patreon giveaway goals. And also about more Heathen Dog. Check his anime on the stream segments, his tabletop gaming fundamental segments, his team-ups, especially that Garthon guy. I heard he's pretty swell. He's all right. He's all right. And selective game streams. Thank you very much, everyone.